Uh, my name is Suzanne Ratzliff, and I have been a member of the cemetery, uh, Farmers Valley Cemetery Association, for over 20 years. And I'm Karen Carlson. Um, I'm a caretaker of the cemetery, and my husband is president. And I think I might be vice president. We're still not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, we went to the uh, trial. Well, it wasn't the trial. It was the sentencing this morning of the the uh, boy who damaged the da damaged. Gosh, that's not the right word. Uh, tore up the cemetery, and. Uh, we didn't think he was going to get much because he's young and um, we thought he was going to get let off with probation, a slap on the hand, and we were just totally shocked. We were. The, the judge was very fair and I think um, for both parties mm -hmm. because this young boy has a chance to change his life mm -hmm. and he has a consequence for what he did to the cemetery and we feel that the cemetery will also be benefiting now financially yes, yes. and um, just knowing that he has a con consequence for what he's done I think other people will see that as as a deterrent for these uh, for any cemetery in the state of Nebraska or beyond and there were school kids in the courtroom and they were watching this and I hope it made an impression on them that there are punishments for behavior like this he, he was drinking and I think he thought there was nobody down there that would care about this cemetery, and he found out that people came crawling out of the walls about that cemetery. And we all love it and care about it, and uh, we cared about, uh, the people came out of the walls and donated money and time and effort, um, and they want to see it put right. And I don't think he counted on that. I think he thought it was a forgotten cemetery. Sometimes out of tragedies can come good things, and that's what we have found, that, that uh, mm -hmm. this, this sadness that we felt and the pain that we felt. It, it, the first day we walked out there it and saw terrible. the damage, it was, it was very bad. And what we see now is we have people coming together, uh, not just locally. We, I mean, we've had uh, York County, Hamilton County, Clay County, all these people from around this near area. And letters from around the country. And, and yes, Nebraska and beyond across mm -hmm. the United States, and donations coming in. Mm -hmm. And we're very positive that if these uh, students tonight, if they will be able to raise their $10,000 mm -hmm. and the Henderson State Bank matches that, we have enough money for the restoration. Mm -hmm. We still want to build a fence. Mm -hmm. We have half of that paid for through a grant because we want the cemetery to be more secure and, and a new fence was greatly mm -hmm. needed. Mm -hmm. So we will still be needing money for the fence. And the stones are going to get fixed correctly. Uh, we, as caretakers, we did the best we could to get them back up as soon as we could, but we didn't get them fixed exactly right. Um, we're going to have professionals come in and fix these very old stones that were kicked over violently and shattered and uh, you can't read them anymore and these stones were laying all over the ground in that cemetery and it was heartbreaking and to know that somebody can come in and put them together like they never were broken is wonderful is one but it's going to take money and i don't think he thought about that at all and uh, he got told today how much uh, what they put on it, forty thousand dollars, something. I think something like that. It's going to cost a lot for experts to come in and fix it, and he wasn't counting on that. No, and and some people have questioned why we've gone so far away to South Carolina to find someone to um, restore these markers. Um, there are people all around who do that, but we looked at the Chikora organization, and they have been their nonprofit organization. I think they've been in business forty years. Yeah. And since they're based on the East Coast, they are restoring markers that are not just 100 yeah. years old, but they are trained hundreds to restore them hundreds, yeah. from the 1600s and 1700s. So we really feel that um, they will do an excellent job and try to get these stones back to the, the best original like. state that we can. Because so many of them were baby stones. And you talk about sad. You read them and they're two months old and brothers and sisters and one was uh well there were three in a row and they were all kicked over and just little baby and they're all children and one was put in a fence so disrespectfully 
And um, yeah, we just want to get it back, the beautiful cemetery that we had before. And we're on our way now. We're on our way. As of today, we can heal. We can heal. We're hoping in the next few weeks that we can contact Shakora and set up a date for them to come out here. And it would take at least two weeks for the restoration. They, um, if they are able to come out and do that, our hope is that by Memorial Day, when we have a Memorial Day service, we will have the markers restored. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to also have the fence the up. The fence and the new <laughs> fence, yes, because yeah. the, the old one is literally falling apart. So, yeah, that's what we're hoping for. And so, yeah, we'll keep we'll keep we'll keep raising money to finish up the fence. Yes. We we have half of it paid for. Yes. And if the kids make their ten thousand, we're we're we can I guess there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. Now we can see the end. Yes. Now we can start to see the end. Yeah. And anyway. we thank all the people who oh, have uh, sent the money. museum um, in Aurora, Megan. Um, there's so many people we can thank. Nancy Beach. Oh uh, yes. Um, we can't even count them all. We yes. can't. We can't. The school. The Honor Society, the bank. Paul Siebert volunteering Paul Siebert tonight. To he comes out to our Memorial Day service and does a wonderful job there. We just love him coming out there. And uh, we hope that we can open it up oh, all right, and have a lot of people out there on Memorial Day to come out a celebration. and see a celebration to see what the cemetery looks like then. So we're inviting everybody out on Memorial Day to come out. And, it's a potluck. It's a potluck, so you got to bring something to eat. <laughs> come and join us. It'll yep. be great. It, it's a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day. And one, once you come, you will always come, because it's a wonderful thing to do. Somebody wants more information, and they call. Oh, mm. okay. Mm. That's, that's the mm. Wait a minute. We have to think about that one. If you need any information on the cemetery, I'm happy to give my number at... Uh, 402-723-4252. You can give me a call. You want to give Larry's number? Well, I don't know what it is. He's number three on my phone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is his number? Oh, God. Um, I can give the office number. He can hear call, on that phone. Call the Plainsman Museum in Aurora, Nebraska, yeah, and Megan will be happy to help you. Yes. She has a lot of information.